Emily Dickinson, and the great glow-up, or the ill-fated glow-up, depending on who you are. Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Ford, and we are here for another poetry discussion, which will take place, of course, in two Disco- two playlists, pardon me, here on the channel. Number one, the poetry discussion playlist. Number two, the Emily Dickinson playlist, a playlist of videos dedicated completely to the greatest poet of all time. Of course, referencing Emily Dickinson. The poem in question today is known as No Matter Now, Sweet, and it reads as such. No matter now, sweet, but when I'm Earl, Won't you wish you'd spoken to that dull girl? Trivial a word, just trivial, a smile. But won't you wish you'd spared one when I'm Earl? I shan't need it then. Crests will do, eagles on my buckles, on my belt, too. Ermine my familiar gown, say, sweet. Then, won't you'd wished you'd smiled, just me upon. So what makes this poem function, it's always difficult, sometimes maybe especially in Emily Dickinson, to locate who is the speaker. And when I'm Earl, this individual who is going to be Earl is the same as that dull girl. We see that here, won't you wish you just smiled me upon? Um, notably, the title of Earl was never actually adopted for women. It was only, I believe, mistress. There was no rank, if you will, of Earl among women. But that doesn't matter. We have here an American poet. There are no Earls in America. Maybe... The eagle is letting us know that this is in America, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't need to be. We are being uh, coerced into believing that the speaker is going to transcend to the level of Earl regardless of her gender. Now, in what faculty, in what facet of life will this individual be an Earl? I think that is the part of this poem which makes it personable, which brings it to the to the level of the reader. I don't think that what Emily Dickinson is starting here, is quoting here, is suggesting here, is actually some form of royalty. I think that what we're talking about here is, as American as it gets, an earned position an earned position in some domain. To me, reading from the outside, diagnosing an Emily Dickinson poem, and, you know, Emily Dickinson came from a family that had influence, uh, and earned influence, and um, her father did a lot of stuff. But I think that what we're talking about here is an earl of literature, an earl of the intellectual, intellectuals, um, intelligentsia. I think that what we're doing here with this poem is saying that, look, you didn't have time for me when I was what I am. Because this is in the future tense, when I become earl. The speaker here is not suggesting that they currently are someone of power, but that they will be. This is translatable to our own lives in some domain. We all think of ourselves in this fashion on some level, whether that be our workplace, whether that be our hobby, whether that be where we create, whether that be any number of things with our family, etc., etc. We all have some, hopefully, some aspirational place where, where we will be. And it is all too tempting during the daydream process to imagine that we will be that person that is powerful or influential in that space. 
So it is a poem that invites fantasy. It is a poem that invites um, the daydreams of the reader into the act of interpreting the poem, into the act of appreciating the poem. And it's, on some level, we have a little bit of, uh, of chutzpah in ourselves behind the reading of this poem, maybe because we have ingested so many stories, whether that be through literature, whether that be through Hollywood, whether that be through television, Netflix, whatever it is, where the glow up, if you will, does in fact happen. But there is, on some level, something very sad about this poem as well, because our speaker is just fantasizing. Our speaker has two fantasies in mind. Our speaker has the subject of this poem as a fantasy. Our speaker has the prospect of this poem as a fantasy. The, the, inciting, the inciting drive is twofold. Number one, the individual, the sweet in question. Our speaker wants that person. Otherwise, these words would not be uttered. Our speaker also wants transcendence to the realm of Earl in whatever realm that be, but does not have it, does not have either. This poem is ultimately aspirational, but it is also a poem that is sad at the same time. Our speaker does not have her suite. Our speaker does not have her rank. We know through biography that Emily Dickinson never attained in her life the rank of Earl through her writing in any respect, really. But that is as it was to be recognized at the time. Now, Emily Dickinson absolutely is an Earl. Emily Dickinson is the queen herself depending on who it is that you're talking to. Still, Emily Dickinson did not attain the suite in question. If we are to bring this to our own life, if we are to welcome the sort of lessons of this poem to ourself, as sort of is the practice of literature in general, how are we to really interpret that? How are we to take that into stride? How are we to implement those lessons to the self? How do we feel in retrospect about Emily Dickinson? How do we feel in retrospect about the quote-unquote lessons of this poem? It's difficult, I think. It's difficult to, we all want the reward for our labors in our own life. We all want to look at our life and feel that we have accomplished. Are these words less powerful if we look at the life scope of Emily Dickinson? And she published only a handful of poems in her life. And if you look at those poems, I would argue that they were nowhere near her best poems, her most powerful poems, her most applicable poems. Nowhere near those, those poems. So to know at the end of the line that neither of these goals was accomplished by our writer, Maybe not necessarily our speaker. Our speaker can be a completely fictional um, individual, a fabrication. But the author is not. It's difficult for me, as indebted to Emily Dickinson as I am, to look at a poem like this and imagine Emily Dickinson as anything less than a great success. But you have to wonder if she felt like that. And not if she did not, you know, would she have traded 
the standing that she has in literature now for a more enjoyable life. And, you know, maybe she maybe she loved her life completely. You know, it's, it's hard to say. Certainly the power of her words would be abnormal from someone who was just at peace. I think that's maybe safe to say, if not assume. So poems like this, for me, are difficult. Um, owing so much to Emily Dickinson, while simultaneously recognizing that Emily Dickinson maybe didn't have such a great go while she was going. That is all I have for this poetry discussion. If you like or appreciate what it is that I do here, hitting the like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers. If you find yourself here by chance but not design, literature is the only thing I talk about on this channel, dropping multiple videos every single week. There's poetry every Monday, and I hope to have you back for the next one.